Hey everybody, um, so I uh, posted a video uh, this morning about graph cursors. Um, per request, I had a request to talk about how you can programmatically control these, um, set their position programmatically, and also read back position. So um, should have done that in that initial video. So here's a secondary video to walk through how to do that. So here I just have a graph. Um, and I've already gone ahead and created two cursors. So I've got a max and a min. Um, and uh, they're, they're kind of off the screen right now, but yeah, there they are. I mean, they exist, right? I can move it. You see the values there. Um, yeah. Um, so what I was going to do is um, basically just use a... Uh, uh, I'm just going to put a sine wave onto the graph. I'm going to set the cursors to find the max and min of that sine wave and place them on that. And then I'm going to do a little bit of math here to determine the change in the x direction and the change in the y direction. So if I run this, I get my sine wave. Um, it automatically snapped my max right to the peak of this sine wave and it automatically snapped my min right to the bottom of the sine wave. I also can see my change in the x direction. So just basically this difference here is 0 0.5, which if you look, this is 0 0.75 and 0 0.25, which, yep, right number. And then we can also see our change in the y direction. So from this line to this line is two. So we've got from negative one to one. So yeah, everything's working good. And I've also got that set. So if I, you know, hey, LabVIEW algorithm went and snapped to these positions and these are my measurements. And as a user, if I'm like, hey, you know, I don't disagree. I mean, or I disagree with, you know, what LabVIEW did. I think it missed something. Maybe there was some noise in the signal and I want to readjust that. Well, I can move these. And as you can see, as I do that, my change in X and my change in Y update. So it's constantly just reading those, uh, um, positions and calculating the difference between my yellow and my red. So as I get closer, my dx and my dy get smaller. And as I get away up to the peak, my dy is at max and my dx obviously gets bigger as I go away. So let's go take a look at the code on how this is implemented. Um, and it's actually really simple. So there's just a couple of property nodes to be aware of. So here I'm just generating my sine wave. Um, and then I'm using this uh, waveform min max function just to pull the min and max. So, you know, a lot of times you'll have some algorithm that is determining what points you care about. That way I could pass in any sine wave so I could change the, you know, frequency, the amplitude, etc. And I'm still going to find my max and min. So, um, yeah. So using that just to pull those. Um, and now here's where we're actually programmatically controlling the cursors. So we're going to just use property nodes. Um, and the main cursor that you just need to get a handle on is this active cursor function. So you're going to pass in an index of which cursor you want to be the active cursor. And then once you've set an active cursor, all of the other cursor properties are going to be based off of that active cursor. So setting active cursor to zero is going to set it to our first cursor which is the max one. Then I can use this cursor position um, Y and cursor position X to set the X and Y positions of that cursor. So I'm just passing in the Y max and then I'm taking this time value and converting it to a float for my position X. Um, and then I can then switch to my other cursor. So I'm using the active cursor again to switch to my second cursor um, and then writing the positions in there. And that's all you have to do to programmatically set the position of those cursors. And you could do the same thing for any amount of cursors that you have. You could have, you know, way more than just two. I don't know necessarily why there would be a reason to have a lot, but you might have a use case. Um, so yeah. And then here, just a simple event loop. Um, maybe not the cleanest, but good enough to demo this. But we're basically just, again, setting the active cursor. Um, so this is the cursor we can interact with at the moment. And I'm reading its position. Um, so I'm pulling out a cluster of the X and Y coordinates, switching to the next cursor and pulling out the X and Y coordinates. And then just doing a little math, subtracting that, and that gets us our change in direction. So really, really simple, right? I can scoot these, you know, wrong places hit run, they snap right back to where they're supposed to be, 
And yeah, I can then move those if I disagree with what LabVIEW decided and you know manually manipulate them. So hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully you can manipulate the, that in your own projects and you know customize it to your needs. If there's anything else anyone feels like was missing in that, please just let me know. Um, happy to expand on that a little more. So thanks for watching. Canon Controls is your gateway to mastering LabVIEW. Dive into programming for data acquisition, industrial communications, and manufacturing automation. Explore how to enhance your projects with cybersecurity best practices. Join the journey to elevate your skills and secure your systems with every episode.